So I'm going to show you how easy and natural it is to study science on a spreadsheet. And to do that, I'm going to make a spreadsheet that's going to create some waves using sine functions and add the waves together and see if we can pull a scientific principle out of this. So in order to do this, we have to count by tiny intervals. And our count column, which you could think of as time, is going to be in column A. And to do this, we're simply going to add the previous time to the count interval, which we're going to lock in to cell A2. And we're going to drag that all the way down to cell 2006. Now I have two graphs made already because I'm not going to bore you by showing you how to construct a graph. But the procedures for that are available on the lab hand handouts for the spreadsheet lab manual. But they're graphed down to row 2006. And what we want to do is we want to have an interval that's going to time out uh, for uh, one second. And in order to do that with the trig function, uh, if we have a frequency of one, then that's going to need to have the wave show one wave for the entire interval. And uh, we'll get to how we're going to do that in a moment. But if we have a frequency of one and an amplitude of one, our first wave will equal the amplitude times, which we're going to lock in using dollar signs. To do that, you press F4. And that's times the sine of the frequency, which we're going to lock in by pressing F4, times the count, and close parentheses. And we're going to double click, and that's going to send us down to row 2006. Now, what I want to do is show only one wave for this interval. Now, I could play around with this number, or I could just use something called GoalSeq, which is essentially a computerized trial and error function and uh, all we need to do for goal seek is tell it we want to set the bottom cell to equal about 2 pi which we'll estimate at 6.29 by changing our interval cell and that should give us one wave in our graph for wave one so goal seek found a solution using trial and error and there's our one wave interval now we want to create a second wave with the same process and to see that we're correct we'll put in a frequency of one but an amplitude of minus one and we'll set that up as equal to the amplitude at four times the sine of the frequency at four times the count and we'll double click that and then we can simply add up the cells for wave one and wave two, and that will give us our sum function. We'll move this graph out of the way so we can double click. And now our sum, which is very unimpressive, is shown in the graph. Uh, so by changing the amplitude, we can see that this is actually adding the two graphs together. And uh, then we can change the amplitude again to see that, yes, in fact, we have two different curves here. So what we want to do now is we want to try to extract a scientific uh, principle from looking at these graphs. And to do that, we're going to play around with the frequencies. So we're going to set the amplitudes to be 1 and minus 1 so that the waves will undergo destructive interference. And uh, we'll start with a frequency of 6 and a frequency of 8. And we'll notice that at the beginning of the interval, the two waves start off out of phase and undergo destructive interference. And as they progress and move along, they get to the point where they're in phase. When they're in phase, they're undergo undergoing constructive interference and their amplitudes are going to combine. So to alternate from uh, destructive interference to constructive interference and then back to destructive interference cyclically that's called beats and by simply playing around with the frequencies a little bit you can start to get an idea of what the uh, frequency of occurrence of beats will be relative to the difference in frequencies because obviously if they have the same frequency beats are not going to take place but if the frequency is slightly different the frequency of the beats is going to vary so uh, if you have a frequency of 8 and 7, you notice one beat takes place. If you have a frequency of 6 and 8, you have two beats taking place. 
this zone. And you can actually see this with much higher frequencies, like if you had a, a C note for an instrument and a slightly flat C note of 127, you can't see the crests and troughs in the individual wave functions, but in uh, some of the two, you can see the beat taking place clearly. Now, students that are musical will know the frequency of beats uh, will get smaller as instruments get in closer tune to each other. So if the instrument was even more flat, then they would notice a higher frequency of beats. And if the uh, frequency is altered and uh, the difference in frequency of 3 hertz is noted for the two wave functions, then uh, the students can conclude that the difference in frequency between the two wave functions will be equal to the frequency of the beats that they observe. And that is how we can draw a scientific conclusion using trial and error on a spreadsheet. Now, the, another interesting thing to note is every time we change a value on this spreadsheet, four columns, each 2,000 rows, each involving uh, several calculations within each cell, we're conducting tens of thousands of calculations in order to produce one single output. But the students don't have to be bogged down in those calculations because the spreadsheet does it all for them. So they're free to focus on the, the nature of the scientific behavior at hand.